What up, players? It's Warboss Tamp in this mode. Today we are unboxing these fellows. These fine fellows are known as Bestigors. They belong to the Beastman army in Warhammer Fantasy. So you get 10 in the box, and um, this was right around the time that after the Empire was re released with their great swords, or gold swords as they're called, in 10 to a box because you only get 10 for a little bit over the same price that you could get a regular Union of State Troopers, then they decided they're going to do this with most of their elites for their um, for their new armies, like Skaven, their Storm Vermin, the Great Swords of the Empire, and now these guys. You get 10 of them in the box. Let's take a look at the instructions. Beastmen Bestagor Herd. That is pretty cool and fluffy. They don't call them a unit or a squad, they call them a herd. The first one up here you see is the Vestigor Gouge Horn. And you see that the, the 3D rendering of the models, what they're supposed to look like and how they actually look, is pretty pretty cool. Really well done, especially compared to something like the Space Marine bike, which hasn't been updated in forever. So we notice right off the bat that even before looking at the sprues, that the torsos all come in one piece. You don't have to worry about gluing the legs to the torsos. Their bodies come in legs and torso piece. You glue the arms and the weapons or anything like that. And the face to the horns. And the face has like this little ponytail thing at the back. For most of them. Yeah, most of them have these like ponytail things going on at the back of their heads. Here's a standard bearer. Either mount your standard top with one of these two. And they all come with two handed weapons. So, here's the horn blower. So, except for these like command guys who have um, one handed weapons, most of these Vestigors have great weapons. And by great weapons, we mean axes. Yep, this is, this is what it's supposed to build. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the sprues now. We get 4, 8, 10, 25 millimeter square bases. And let's take a look at... Oh, you actually get two identical sprues, so you're going to end up with two flags. And that's cool because that means that there's more for your bits box. So looking at the top, we've got very nice looking double-handed axes. They've got these markings on it, which aren't really chaos runes per se, but they look very savage, pr uh, primal, primitive. Um, unlike the fine cast models, you see that the skulls on these Beastmen Vestigors are actually proportioned and rounded out realistically. So that is very cool. Here's a head, a little blade on the, on the top. Uh, the horn. It's going to look really nicely, uh, nice when it's all painted up. Here's the side with the flag, the standard. We've got three skulls on it. Banner top. Pole. The pole has a nice, yeah, it does have this very nice subtle wood grain. You won't, you don't really, you're not really able to tell, but this is going to be um, pretty cool to paint up. You can dry brush or just hand paint it really nicely to look like dark wood with a lighter grain to it. Oh, this is really cool. This guy's got the little, um, I don't know what you would call it, but it's like that little round cap over his eyepiece that with the with the little holes in it for both sides. So that's very nergly. You notice a lot of um, it, it looks like a fly's eyeball. So so this guy could definitely be painted up all rusted and nasty looking like a Nurgle Bestigore, or you just paint him in solid brass and metallic colors and make him look very. Uh, cornate, like corn, or anything like that. And here's the other sprue they have, and these are identical. 
so you've got two more like half sprues and they're identical so again you've got these guys their heads with the long flowing hair horns ridges on one side and here you've got their weapons arms uh, symbols so let's take a look at the torsos of the best gores the bodies are just like the regular gores but they have more cloth and over the cloth they have uh, chain mail they're supposed to be like the best armored and best armed guys in the herds so they would have a little bit more protection they've got these armor plates over their legs almost looking maybe samurai ish almost you could definitely think of that when you see some of the painted examples where they're very red and even some of them with their ponytails and their horns uh, I've seen some great examples of them painted up in red reds and whites like feudal Japan samurai so so that's pretty cool so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, build up a regular guy live for you now so that you can see the process of putting one of these together Take off a square base. And I'm just going to build up a regular rank and file guy just so you can see um, the process, like I said, of it. I really like Beasts of War. They, they show the sprue, they show the model, they kind of talk about it, but I, you don't really see them build it. Like, they kind of cuts away and then when the camera comes back. And just like I've been doing with most of my unboxing videos, and so I thought I'd do a little change. We'll take a look at it. I'm actually clipping, cutting everything out, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about things that I notice, show you any mold lines or anything that I notice, and that might be a fun, fun thing to go about, or a fun way to go about this. Horns. Head. arm and axe okay so let's take a look at these pieces see if there's any mold lines or anything like that a little bit of flash on the pieces some mold lines here on the top right down the center as is expected for for anything like right down the center but definitely not as bad as some other other models that I've seen the Emperor Empire Great Swords which were released just a little bit earlier I believe than the Beastmen had the the Great Swords because they were a new sculpt in plastic they had some pretty severe mold lines I noticed but these the the sculptors who built these were very smart about putting the armor plates kind of where the mold lines would be indistinguishable so like at the edges of the armor plates or right down the side down the front of it so that you wouldn't really be able to tell and I think that's really smart of them and I don't really see mold lines where the obvious places would be like for example on Tau Fire Warriors. Oh yeah, Tau Fire Warriors, that mold line right down the center of the helmet. For those of you who collect or have ever built up a Tau Warrior, you know what I am saying. So the horns look pretty decent. Horns are usually where you would see mold lines showing up, but I don't really see any. The hardest are when the mold lines are very prominent right on the front where all the ridges are. And these look pretty nice. I'm not, I can't speak for the rest of them. Let's just take a cursory glance. Yeah, even... Look, even the champion's horns right here are curiously bereft of mold lines, which makes me very, very happy. Carefully shave off the flash. So you've got a minor, minor mold line right here on the gauntlet and the arm. Kind of see when we turn it in the light, but that is nothing 
that a little scrape with the back of our hobby knife won't get rid of. Let's take a look at the other one. At one point in my hobbying career, I decided it would be smart to just uh, take all the sprues out of the boxes and just to save space when I was storing my models away to actually clip the pieces out of the sprues, not glue them together, but just put all the clipped out pieces into bits boxes and just label them with the names of various armies and stuff. And boy, that proved to be very, very dumb because then you had arms that didn't match with their weapons and all sorts of stuff like that. So definitely keep your pieces together if you're not gonna build and base then or build and glue all together at once, then you want to make sure you keep your models on the sprue so that they can be around where they need to be. You know what I mean? Okay, these models actually have the left foot forward. So we're gonna imagine like this side here is the front and we have, I mean the right foot forward and we have the the right foot of the Bestigore slightly forward in front of the left. When you look at the built-up models, most of them have the right foot placed in front. Okay, while we wait for that to dry, we can glue the horns to the head. They fit really nicely and evenly together, so we just do a little dry fit to make sure that they do, and then apply our Model Master plastic cement. Hold it down for about five seconds. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five. And slowly let go. What I like to do is glue the torso together, put that bad boy on, then get the arms and stuff into place. Most people do it, I mean, everybody does it differently. Some people like to glue the, um, the, the arms to the weapons and then put the arms on the body. Some people like to put the arms on the body and then the weapons. I find that when you've got pieces that go directly together like this and match really well, then the easiest thing is to glue them, glue at least one side to the weapon the side slots really nicely into the gauntlet. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna dry fit by putting, kind of planning out where the, where the other arm is gonna go here, and then Checking the angle to make sure that if the hand is there, then looks like the axe is going to be raised in front like that. And then we just kind of determine where that goes. Then we glue that, glue that puppy on. Speaking of puppies, we were by my uh, local friendly local game store the other day and there's a pet store in that complex, in the shopping complex and my lady friend is like trying to get me to buy her a puppy she loves puppies and I was like, never! it would eat all of my warhammers so at about the time you've got the other arm glued to the weapon is when I would glue them both to the body because they're both still kind of malleable. As you can see, the main goal is get as, li get as little glue on your fingers as possible. Oops. So we've determined that this is gonna be kind of like this. So we hold it in place. Yeah, when I first started out this hobby, 
without fail after every every painting session every every time I would glue a model together it didn't matter what it was I would have like super glue all over my fingers this wasn't good okay so we've got a guy there glue points are all secured there's no weird looking breaks or seams standing nicely on the base starting to come off you can also wait for the feet to dry completely to the base I maybe should have done that but that's alright then I like to glue the head on last but again bada boom the reason I glue the head on last is so that you can see where the focus of the model will be if we just glued it on first also it might have gotten in the way of the arms which is not what you want so as tempting as it is to do first you can hold off till the end and there you have it tilt it a little bit because this is the front so that's what he would look like this is let's kind of take a little tour the shoulder can actually bump up just a little bit yes especially with rubber or not rubber but plastic cement but with with any kind of glue you want to make sure that your pieces are not completely dry if you're still having to fix anything on them but there you go there's our finished model so thanks for watching players and um, I'm not gonna build up my whole unit what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut away now do the same process that I did for this guy with the standard bearer the champion and the musician and then we'll show you what those three look like at the end of the video then we'll wrap this up all right players we are back and I actually had so much fun putting these ten guys together that after I built the musician the standard bearer and the champion I just I just kept going so um, first up impressions of building this unit is that you are definitely going to need to be careful in how you rank them up and that is really going to go down to your position their bodies on the bases at the very beginning just because um, there's no real guide for where they're supposed to be and on the bases where you're supposed to position them so um, if you're in if you place one too far forward or too far to the side, it's going to interfere with the one next to it. And this has always been kind of a problem, especially with two-handed weapon wielding models like spearmen or uh, great swords. But especially with these models, they're bulky, they're big, they're, their stance is wide. So you're definitely going to need to, to take care. But let's take a look at these models. These sculpts are really, really cool each of their torsos on the five models that they, they replicate. So, but those five that you have, just like the Empire State Troopers are completely different. So their armor plates, the pouches, the things that they have on the torsos, each one is different. And here's the musician. He's got curved horns and a little hand weapon. Uh, what I think I'm going to do, I'll show you the sprues in a little bit, but there are one, two, three, four. There are four leftover two handed weapons. So for this musician, for the standard bearer, um, they're both wielding just regular hand weapons. And to show that they belong to this unit, not only the fact that they are armed. Or armored as best of course, but what I think I might do is uh, kit bash and convert, chop up the double handed weapons so that they can, um, I can hook them onto their back, or maybe use some Gale Force 9 chain to do that. So I'm gonna probably make a War Boss Chop Shop video. But yeah, just take a look at some of these awesome details on the axes. There's a double handed, or double handed, there's a eight pointed star. 
I like these faces that are screaming. They look very, they look very uh, mean and rugged. Hanging skull there. Uh, just, I, I really enjoy these models. I wish that you get more of them in the box, more than ten. And I wish that they weren't so expensive, or else I'm sure a lot of a lot of uh, Beastman players would get more. Or, or purchase more, but I guess that's just a you know a marketing thing from GW. They want you to spend your money. Um, oh, flash! I gotta remove that. What did I want to say? Every Beastman player should have a couple units, or at least one unit of Bestigors, and that unit should be pretty beefy. So they're gonna be buying these regardless of the cost. Or just converting their own Bestigore models, but um, if you're using Games Workshop models, and if you're using the actual ones you're supposed to, these are really well done. They look really mean. They look beefy. I'm gonna enjoy painting them up. And yeah, I don't know what else there is to say. The champion with the Nurgle little eye coverings looks really awesome. Uh, love. The little screaming skull here. That's really, really cool. And here's the standard bearer. I decided to go with, uh, instead of the shield, with this like mutated animal skull. When I first got into Warhammer, the beastmen were actually just mutants. They were outcasts of human society that ran off into the forests after they found out they had mutations. So the, the thing that makes me kind of sad is that they were a lot more diverse in, in those days. Like you could have one guy that had like the head of a bird and the legs of a goat and the guy right next to him would look like, um, would, would have feathers and have green skin and like 20 eyeballs. So I'm kind of sad that Games Workshop has gone away from them and made them all just look like like these, like the Gores, the Ungores, the Best of Gores, they all basically look like, you know, they've got these satyr legs and just very cattle-like goats or cows or bulls um, and take that all the way up to the Minotaurs and stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of sad that Games Workshop has, and they've been doing it for a while, the Beastman army has always been kind of like this uh, cattle kind of aesthetic to it, but uh, it makes it makes you miss the originality, the potential for conversion that the original Chaos Mutant army kind of had as its flavor. <laughs> okay, so anyways, that's going to wrap this up. Thanks for watching this unboxing, Warhammer Fantasy Beastmen Army for the Bestigore Herd boxed kit. Oh dang, I was gonna wrap up. I was so excited to finish that I forgot. You have a whole pile of sprues left over. So, let's take a look at what you get. Because I chose to use the command sprue, do a full command, I've got one set of double-handed weapons. I've got a champion's head with the Nurgle eye coverings and champion's horns. A hand that's holding the screaming skull. Because they're, like I said, the command sprue is duplicated an arm holding up a double-handed weapon, a shield you can use as a shield for, uh, and, and also as a banner top, but if you want an extra shield for some reason you have that option. You've got one Beastman Bestigore head there without the horns. You've got another two sets of arms and double-handed weapon. You've got horns and a bestigore head, the two arms that hold the musician's horn and a hand weapon, another champion or uh, bestigore head without the horns, and on this sprue you get another banner top there, a banner, another shield, and a banner pole arm, and a single hand weapon. So. Going by the Warboss Tay grading system, 
the ease of putting these guys together, how easy was it? I would say out of an A through F scale, it would be maybe like a B because they were def these models were definitely not easy by any stretch of the means to put together. You're gonna have to hold them down and hold the pieces in place. If Because of the small surface area of the hooves, if you just glue them to the base and kind of walk away, they have a tendency to do this leaning t tower of, of pizza uh, thing. I love pizza. And uh, you don't want that. And also it's really, because of that, it's really easy to just kind of glue these, put some glue on the ends of the arms attach the weapons and kind of hold it in place for a little while then go off and do the next model and the model just kind of comes apart when you're not there which is why I always like to hold the pieces down I tried to hold it down for a good amount of time to get a good uh, chemical bond there and um, that's why I try to get into the habit now of counting five one thousands when applying the rubber cement or the, the plastic cement even if I don't do it out loud it's always uh, better I feel it kind of helps me remember to do that so ease of putting it together maybe like a B minus C plus the cleaning up of the model though is this has been one of the easier sets to clean up not as much flash or definitely not that much flash compared to fine cast and not as much mold lines as you would expect there to be so very very cool uh, definitely a minus B plus for ease of cleaning this model and finally for the look and uh, actually not not for the finally but the look the aesthetic the the way just the model appears it's it's just really great and it looks like it's going to be great to paint up the details from the ridges of the horns to the the chain mail all the little details on each of the torsos looks really really good so i'm going to give that an a and finally extra bits got a lot you've got a lot for co conversion potential to throw in your bits box it's so refreshing after all of these single part or piece you know single model poses and options for weapons and equipment plastic kits like the aspiring champion the warsmith the uh, dr festus there there are so many that are being released now that uh, it's really great to go back to a kit like this and have just a lot of bits left over so i'm really excited to have that in my collection and yeah like i said great great box kit i don't know about the price the price is definitely a c to a d because just uh, 10 models it's so hard to justify 10 models for the price but um, if you can get them cheap if you could trade them if you can get them off of ebay uh, if somebody's leaving the hobby and is getting rid of their best of gores, definitely pick them up because any Beastman player worth his halt, uh, salt is going to have a whole bunch of these guys in his stable. 